All right, so doing a Bigfoot documentary now. We've got our shelters in place here. Hi guys, I'm here with uh, Pete Penny here uh, in Pittsburgh. A nice, rainy, cloudy, miserable day here. But we're going to Hot Springs, Virginia with Mel over there. Yeah. We're doing airplane camping today and it's all of our gear we got. It's very bulky stuff, but none of this stuff is very heavy. It's all like five pounds each, so it's just very bulky. Uh, forecast is saying it's supposed to be sunny there uh, with a low temperature tonight of 38 degrees. It stayed rainy and cloudy all the way down to Morgantown as expected. Mel was at the controls getting good experience for an instrument track ride and Pete was getting a good idea from the backseat of what instrument training is all about. Although the weather down south was forecasted to be clear, we could occasionally see things like WVU Stadium at Morgantown or the mixture of red and green mountaintops near Elkins. The winds aloft were around 26 knots that day, so as expected the mountain wave was becoming moderate. The lenticular clouds over the ridges were a reminder of how bad the turbulence was going to be on final approach. We flew directly over Greenbanks Observatory, which is home of the world's largest fully steerable radio telescope. Fortunately, the weather cleared up a bit as we approached the airport, allowing us to do a visual approach. Unfortunately, I forgot to bring my GoPro or my camera mounts. As expected, the turbulence was enough to require our full attention, so I wasn't able to record the landing. The airport manager and his dog greeted us and showed us two different campsites that you can taxi right up to, fully stocked with wood and a fire pit. We chose to camp in the small grove, hoping that the trees would break up to 20 plus knots of wind. It's a unique place to camp because it reminds you that you're several miles from the nearest house and over 20 minutes away from the nearest settlement, but you still have access to the FBO for shelter, which is just a short walk away. The manager was kind enough to lend us a car for today. We took the scenic drive down the mountain during peak foliage to explore the town. The bottom of the mountain is full of open meadows. Hot Spring is a town that was founded in the mid-1700s and is full of historic buildings. We got lunch and explored the Omni Resort that encompasses the town. We took to the road again and found one of the most stunning waterfalls we've ever seen on the side of the road called Falling Springs. The area is full of extensive back roads that lead to hiking trails and other waterfalls. After exploring an abandoned bridge in the dark, we got dinner in town and attempted to take a shortcut straight up the mountain. Turns out the top portion of the road is closed off most of the year by the game commission. Before calling it quits, we pitched a fire using 100 low lead avgas from the airplane. Avgas fire starting. Don't put your face near it. <laughs> That's how it's done. That's how it's be done. <laughs> We're on a mountain top. Pretty much in the middle of nowhere. As you look around the campground, it looks like pitch darkness, but it's pretty convenient. Right behind us, we got that FBO light with the epic American flag. The temperature dropped to 38 degrees as planned for. Now editing this video, I feel obligated to mention that Pete did not tent in the cold, but slept in the FBO while Mel and I embraced the elements. Before leaving, Pete and I explored the airport, seeing some of the most stunning airport views that I've ever seen.
Recapping on the trip, I would recommend anyone visiting to devote an entire day or two exploring because there's so much to see. To those planning on flying, make sure you understand mountain weather such as mountain wave, the downdrafts and updrafts generated by the ridge on takeoff and landings, rotors and lenticulars, and most importantly, density altitude. Ingalls Field is the highest public use runway in Appalachians and makes for the perfect adventure.